Okay, so today is Frequently Asked Questions, episode 32. That's right, I know it's only Thursday. I'm releasing it a day early because we have to answer these questions one by one. They're very involved. This is involving synthetic pre-drawn comb by Better B at betterbee.com. And the question comes from Bill Green, among many others. I would love to hear about your experience with Better B Comb. Well, I'm going to tell you my experience. I'm going to show you how I used it. This is the way it comes. I bought two big boxes of this, and there were 20 in each box, and I bought them with the frames. They retail for about $8 if you get the frames and the pre-drawn comb together, and that's what I did. This stuff feels just like real beeswax drawn comb. If you want to know what it's made of, I'm going to put a link down in the video description, and you can go to their website and read how it's been synthesized. But it's all food grade. Where can you use it? You can only use it in your brood boxes. Here's the thing, what is the most expensive thing to the bees when they're going to build up in a new colony? Resource wise, there's nothing more expensive to them than building new combs, so this is gonna give them a bump. This time of year, most people wouldn't be hiving swarms, but I'm going to. I'm gonna do it in this video. How's this stuff held in the frame? We'll use round toothpicks. So we put these toothpicks in, there's holes on each end, across the top and across the bottom, and it comes with little packs of them, but they're kinda stingy with the toothpicks. And they want you to break them off like this. And then they want you to use the other half of the toothpick to put in the holes on the other side. And you know what I say? Get yourself a big box of round toothpicks and don't worry about snapping them off and reusing a half like this. I don't like it. And here's the other thing. When I was opening this and pulling it out, look, I tore one in half. And that's good. You know why? Because I want to see if the bees are going to mend it. What do you think? You think they'll treat it like regular wax, drawn comb, and fix it just as if they made it? They sure will. In fact, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. They did. So it's also tapered a little bit and they're angled down. So there's instructions with it that tell you how to put it in the frames. Now just get yourself some side cutters or a pair of needle nose pliers with a nipper like this. Cut off those toothpicks and stick them in. Now look what happened. I have a swarm. This is perfect. Now we're going to use this swarm to demonstrate having a swarm and then starting them off. And then, of course, as we go through the video, I'm going to show you how well they did or did not accept and use better bees, better comb. Mm. So this is a good sized swarm. They weigh a lot. How would you collect them? Most people would shake them down into a box or they'd put a bed sheet on the ground under the tree or they'd cut the tree branches out. And look, they've got resources with them. Remember, they took a bunch of honey. And uh, you've even got some foragers here that have got pollen on their legs. There's drones in there to carry out their genetics. This is a lot of bees. Now look at the tips of their abdomens there sticking out. See that light colored band right near the tip? That's the Nasanoff gland. And they are keeping themselves together through pheromones, the queen's pheromone. So they're still collecting on this branch and I'm going to collect them. I'm going to collect them in a big butterfly net because that's how I do it now. That's how I've collected all my swarms this summer. I've just used butterfly nets. You can create a huge pillowcase style butterfly net, shake bees into it, tie it in a knot, put that in your car and drive them home. Before I collect that swarm, I have to set up a new stand. So I used iron T-posts here. I have inch and a half diameter metal galvanized conduit for electrical work. And uh, I have another video on how I make those stands. So if you need that, let me know. I'll give you a link. And also there's an entrance reducer. We're going to need that. We have an inner cover. This inner cover has burr comb already on it. We're also going to use the Be Smart Designs Ultimate Hive Cover. And we're going to use their exterior sugar syrup tank for feeding these uh, bees to get them off to a good start. And you can also see that we've got frames in that box that are by better be a better comb close up of the swarm here and how do you think I'm gonna get up to get them that's right I'm gonna back my golf cart up there it has a little cargo area in the back I'm gonna stand on that they're about 10 feet off the ground that's a perfect height for me so get your golf cart too if you don't have one I'll give you a link to one you just get one off of Amazon or something I'm only kidding anyway 50-50 sugar water. I'm going to spray it on them. Why? Well, because they're thirsty and it's hot. And it helps to weight them down. So when I shake this branch, instead of cutting it off, you could cut it and take the whole branch. But I'm going to put a butterfly net underneath. I'm going to give them a shake and they're going to fall into that net. And then I'm going to walk them over to my box that's ready to go. 
kind of quiet they are. Why am I in a bee suit? Well, because even swarms, once you shake them into something, a lot of people don't mind getting stung in the face, the chin, the neck, the ear, the lip. I'm going to be weird and protect myself from being stung by wearing this ventilated bee suit. Here's my fancy butterfly net and I am wearing nitrile gloves. They don't offer any protection from stings, but they do keep your hands clean. And uh, light blue or white gloves don't get the attention of the bees. There you go. That's a lot of bees, people. That's a good six pounds of bees in this thing. And once we shake them off, I'm just gonna walk them over to that box because it's only about 100 feet away. Let's go. Look, they don't even care. They're along for the ride. They know we're taking care of them. We're going to put them in a box. This time of year, you know, it's August. A lot of beekeepers don't collect swarms in August. They don't see the benefit in putting any resources into them. I have a different take on it. I think they're free bees. So now we've got the deep box here. I've got the acorn frames, heavy wax in the middle, and of course, the better bee, pre-drawn better comb six frames of that to the outside. They give you these configurations. I don't know why they tell you to divide them up like that, but uh, that's what I did. I'm following their instructions. We're going to dump this right in here. And there you go. That's a lot of bees. And uh, notice I had the butterfly net inside out so I could grab the seam of it without pinching any bees. Some people think uh, you might want to put a little string or a rope or a little loop on the end of it so you can hold that when you shake them out, but that is my preferred method for collecting and transporting swarms now. And we're going to put those frames in there, jump it ahead. These are heavy wax acorn frames. Those are proven. We know they work. And uh, got a lot of bees in there, and then we've got, of course, the drawn out better comb in there. Now, sometimes the bees also collect again on the same branch that you just took the swarm from. So I looked over there and noticed that there were some more there. So I had to go back, get another butterfly net. Because remember the big one sitting in front here and the bees that are in it are working their way up to the landing board. And I'm going to shake out this other net of bees. There's not a lot of them, but I mean, why leave them on the branch? What happens to the bees that come to that branch now and find that the swarm has departed? Where do they go? Well, if they're lucky, they follow the pheromone of the colony that went into this box. And if they're unlucky and they can't find them, they end up going right back to the colony that they emitted from. And in this case, this colony came out of my observation hive. So they're all pretty calm considering uh, the shakeup that they've had. And don't worry, we're going to see in uh, a little period of time here exactly whether or not they did or did not accept the better comb. So we're going to check in on them. When you hive a swarm like this, the best thing you can do for them is to give them the resources they need, the shelter that they need, and stay out of it. Because you can drive them on. Remember, they're not settled. What's in the, in the colony? Do we have any used drawn wax comb? That would be best, but we don't. So we have acorn frames that just have wax primer on them. And we're testing, as we've said a million times already, the better comb by better bee. And we're going to see how they use that. And we got the inner cover on. And then, of course, we're going to put on the Bee Smart Designs Ultimate Hive Cover. I'm going to scoot that on very carefully. It has spacers built into it around the edges, too, so you don't squash bees. And so it's vented. Although hive top venting this year, the bees have closed up every screen, every vent, everything in the top of their hives. So they're basically telling me they don't care about hive top ventilation. Now we have this blue receiver on top because there's a hole going through it. And uh, we're going to use the tank that comes from B-Smart Design. And we're going to fill that with a gallon of sugar syrup. What's the percentage? 50-50 by weight. 50% 50 sugar, 50% super clean water. And that's the mix that they're going to use to, of course, draw out comb where they need it. Where do they not need to draw out comb? They don't need to draw out the better bee comb it's already drawn out. So we're going to see what they do. We'll put this together. We have these little grommets on top there. Give it a turn. It's installed. Before you put this on your bee box, 
Keep that lid off to the side and let that drain until that tank creates a vacuum. If you put this right on the hive, it will drip down inside. You'll get about a quarter to a half a cup of syrup right in on your bees. So put it on that cover first, then put the cover back on the hive. Now the bees look pretty calm. I think the queen's in there. We're going to look around to see if we have any of these bees lifting their abdomens. Oh, there you go. Off to the left, you can see that light colored patch, that Nasanoff land is being shown and they are attracting the other bees in. So that tells me the queen must be around. August 4th, wrote that on here for reference, installed with better comb. So by the end of this, we're going to check their progress. Now I couldn't get them off the landing board. The bees collected all over the front. So I have to wait until night time to put that entrance reducer on, but don't forget to do that if you're putting in a new swarm of bees or any new colony. They need to be able to defend that entrance. We don't want them wide open like this. Now normally, they, their chances probably wouldn't be very good. They couldn't build up the resources for winter because we need bee numbers. And we're going to see how they're going to do. So now it's nighttime. Got the entrance reducer on. Got the hive visor on. And they have their feeder tanker. So they're good to go. Now we're going to fast forward. Here we are, August 26th. How long have they been in the hive now? I'm going to pull it apart. And we're going to look at these things. See how they handle the frames. 22 days after the swarm was installed. So let's pull the one off to the end here. I like to pull my frames sideways first and then lift them out nice and careful. If you don't bump and jar things around, your bees are going to stay calm and everything's going to be great. So the bee population is very good. We're going to look to see how they handled the better bee comb. Let's get this piece out here. The first thing you notice is that they have attached this comb all the way around the interior of that wooden frame. So they have treated it exactly like their own drawn out comb. And this is the farthest frame, of course, in the center. There's bees on it. They're just prepping it. They're just checking things out. I don't see any resources being stored there. We're going to put them off to the end. Set it to the side. This is off the ground, remember. We're using inch and a half diameter conduit supports that are part of this frame. And uh, now let's pull the next one up here and see what's going on. Slow and steady winds, of course, always. And if you notice, I did scrape off the tops of all of these frames. They had bird comb on them. I always keep a bucket handy so I can put those in there. Because I collect beeswax. Hands are sticky. There's honey all over everything. Look at that one. They're using it. They're using it for storage. They got some spotty storage there. There are some tiny bits of larvae, it looks like, in there. And there might be a couple eggs. Really hard to see the eggs in here. But they're definitely using this frame as they would the comb that they would make themselves. Look how they draw it out in strange angles on the edges. That's when they repaired those edges that I messed up by squashing it in there. So they fix it right up and they connected it right to the wooden frame. So it looks good so far. In fact, if you don't want to watch the end of this video, I'm just going to tell you right now. Green light on this better comb by better bee the bees use it they use it for everything they take to it right away this young colony is doing fantastic they're very calm they have lots of resources and they're gonna make it in fact today we're gonna put another box on here but i'm gonna show you more about the frame so stay with me if you want to see it but if you're just waiting for the end result and whether or not i like them i do now we've got uh, drone comb down here on the ends we've got larvae at every stage of development and uh, I always say this is a healthy colony. And remember, we're doing this midday. So, most of the foragers are out. That's a good time for you to go in and check hives anyway. Because uh, you don't want maximum density in the hive when you're trying to look at comb and you're looking for eggs and larvae and things like that. I am spending too much time in this hive, by the way. If I were not making this video, I would quickly find evidence that there is uh, evidence of the queen and I would close it up. Look at this frame. It's full of larvae. We got some cab larvae. We've got all stages of development. Everything from eggs to fully capped, of course. And uh, they're good. If I didn't have to show you these better combs right now, I would close this up. I would 
push all these frames together, close it up, and uh, get away from it. Because bees don't like to be interrupted. Remember, every time we get in here, we need a purpose. We're invading them. I don't care if you think your bees like you and look forward to your visits. They really don't. We're damaging the infrastructure here. Again, always slide the comb away from the adjacent frame before you pull it up so that you don't roll your bees, don't squash anything. Look at that. It's full of everything. That's an endorsement for better comb right there. And of course they built off the bottom of it and expanded that out. They're using it. It's great. They've coated it. They're using it for food storage. They're using it for brood rearing. They've got their bee bread in there and they repair it like it's their own. I should have marked the one that had the tear in it because they fixed it so well, I can't tell. So they absolutely like it. They use it. It's good to go. You're going to be upset. If you're looking at this and you decide, wow, friend, that's great. This stuff really works well. Now that you said this, I'm going to go buy some. Well, when you go to betterbee.com, guess what? You're going to find out it's out of stock. When's it going to come back in? I think it says the end of September. Nobody's going to be starting swarms and boxes and colonies at the end of September in the northeastern United States. So I guess they underestimated the market. The stuff is a success. You know, when you're starting with uh, a swarm, as I mentioned before, that is the most bare bones beginning you can have with a bee colony. And uh, putting in better comb is definitely a huge boost for them. It gives them resources they can use right away. Other people will argue that their bees can make comb super fast as a swarm. But let me tell you what, if they're not wasting their resources making comb, they're using their resources for other things. So then they're going to build the colony faster. The colony is going to be stronger. Now what would you do? Just close this up the way it is? Nope. I'm going to put another box on here. These things are ready to expand. We're in a nectar flow right now. The goldenrod hasn't even fully come in. So this colony is going to grow fast. We've got capped root in there. When that capped root starts hatching, and then they have more nurse bees. More nurse bees means more insulation, more food for the developing brood, more brood, and on it goes. And if they can fill this medium red super with honey by winter time, that's all they're going to need to get through. So we're just going to put that together. Acorn frames in the middle, man lake frames to the outside, then there's light yellow ones. My bees are not liking the Man Lake waxed frames. They are liking the acorn frames, but since I bought a bunch of the Man Lake, I'm using them up. Inner cover goes in. Got the bees on top there. We had that parked, of course, off the ground. And now we're going to put a polystyrene cover on. I don't need the uh, tanker anymore, so we don't need the ultimate hive cover by Bee Smart Designs. So I'm going to use the insulated cover and just put a lock on it there to hold it in place. So that's it. This thing works. High visor, entrance reducer, food, better comb, extra resources. This colony is ready to grow. So I hope you got something out of it. If you watched my other video that I launched earlier today, I have a skunk that scratched up the surface there and put the muddy paw prints on there. He's eating my bees. That's another story. But if you want to start them off, better be, better comb is an excellent product. I absolutely think it's fantastic. Get some when you can. Sold out now though, so those who thought about it ahead of time and bought it ahead of time have it. Thanks for watching.